would like to call the meeting of the local agency formation commission to call it to, I don't know, we'll start. <laughs> it, it's being held in the Board of Supervisors Chambers County Administrative Building on uh, March 28th at two, at March 28th, 2018 at 5 p.m. I would like to ask Commissioner Garola to lead us in the flag. Thank you. Can I ask for the roll call? So I did things backwards. We can't be in the routine. Commissioner Fowler? Present. Commissioner Scribner? Here. Commissioner Sanders? Here. Commissioner Rivera? Here. Commissioner Mello? Here. Commissioner McKibben? Here. Commissioner McGuire? Here. Commissioner Couch? Here. Commissioner Gorola? Present. Thank you. Okay, approval of the minutes of the February 28th, 2018 meeting. Make that motion we approve. Second. Motion made by Commissioner McGuire, seconded by Commissioner Sanders. Cast your vote. Motion approved, all ayes. Public comments. This portion of the meeting is reserved for persons desiring to address the commission on any matter not on the agenda and over which the commission has jurisdiction. Speakers are limited to two minutes. Please state your name and address for the record before making your presentation. Okay, we'll go to number five, notice public hearings. A, Kern Lafco 2018-2019 proposed preliminary budget. Mr. Knox. Thank you, Chairman. Before you is the preliminary 2018-2019 LAFCO budget. State law requires that the preliminary budget be adopted prior to consideration of a final budget. Final budget is due by June 15th, 2018. Uh, because our meeting in June comes after that date, we will try to get this done in uh, this month in April. And then if there are problems that we needed to address, we can go back into May to get this approved. So. Um, that's why we're here today with the, with the uh, budget this early. Overall, the preliminary budget is, be, is very similar to previous year's budgets with a modest 6% increase. I expect an increase in the number of annexations, detachment, reorganizations, MSRs, sphere of influences, et cetera. Uh, with that, um, uh, I want to run a tight operation, even when the budgets of county, cities, and special districts are start, starting to show some improvement. Let me start on the revenue side. Uh, with user fees, uh, with increased number of bank stations, formation, dissolutions, et cetera, it's expected we will get a few more user fees. So I've jumped that up for by about $5,000. Agency contributions, one third of this amount comes from the county, one third from cities, and a third from special districts. Uh, this, these funds are collected by the county and uh, deposit in our account as we go along during the year. Uh, this number will be adjusted from the carryover from 2017 and 2018 budget. Uh, I do not expect that to be very much different than it has been the last couple of years, the carryover. Um, last month, I mentioned that there are two inactive districts that need to be dissolved. I have not been able to develop a number or determine whether the state has funds available to meet the state requirements. Uh, some of those costs we will absorb. Later on, I will talk about legislation uh, that CalAFCO is, is, has sponsored that will be state dollars for dissolutions. So we would actually have to apply for that from the state if that legislation goes through. On the expenditure, expenditure side, uh, salaries and FICA, uh, this amount covers the three full-time employees. That's the executive officer, the senior analyst, administrative assistant, a uh, clerk, as well as a part-time receptionist, which we currently do not have filled, and do not, although I am continuing to have that in the budget, that is kind of a buffer in case we start getting a lot of projects in and need some help. Um, 
but so far we haven't needed to do that. We've done fine with our, our three full-time staff. I appreciate that. Uh, there has been an increase in my salary in the last year. Thank you very much. Uh, I have also increased uh, the salaries of my, both my staff, and I did that this actually this month. Uh, this is the one-year anniversary of Mr. Rice coming on as full-time and has done an exceptional job during the first year. Gianna has been here off and on and continues to be Gianna, and she does a great job. Uh, state retirement. Um, LAFCO is budgeting that the employer portion of retirement, which will be 14.369% for the fiscal year, LAFCO employees pay 100% of the employer portion, which is 8%. Uh, the number of employer portions only. Uh, this item also includes the amount now required by PERS to pay down any unfunded liability, and an unfunded liability has gone up significantly. I also included in your budget analysis, a little chart that shows what is expected for the next two years. Um, so, yeah, we don't have a whole lot of control over that, that portion of our budget, unless we want to opt out of CalPERS and try something else, and there's, my understanding, there's, there's a considerable penalty to try to do that. So, that's where we are. Um, workers Comp will have a slight increase, uh, so will general liability insurance. Uh, CalAFCO has increased their membership slightly this year. We also expect that increase to uh, continue next year. So there's uh, a little bit of uh, increase there. With office expenses, last year there was significant increase in this category to offset the purchasing card expense carry category that was voted to be removed by the commission. This item covers general office supplies as well as maintenance contracts with general office for the copy machines and computer software, software, which increasingly is paid on a yearly basis. With the hiring of a new senior analyst with GIS experience, thank you, Mr. Rice, we are more fully ver uh, verifying each determination in our applications through the US use of GIS and available data sets. To get full use out of the capabilities, it will require upgrading our license for GIS software suites. In the past, we have relied on the basic GIS license, while Mr. Rice augmented this with his own license that had increased capabilities. As he is now a full-time employee, he no longer carries that license, so we're gonna have to get it ourselves. Um, appreciate all he's done to help us over the years with, with his, his personal license. Uh, we are in the last year of our rent agreement. It goes up slightly this year, but not, not much, and then we'll be ne negotiating this next year on a new, new lease, uh, either with this place or I may consider looking elsewhere. Um, it hasn't been, we've been there a long time and there have been no improvements to our place really, I think since they've moved in. So it, it needs some help. Um, but that's coming down the road. That's not part of this year's budget. Uh, professional and specialized services. Um, this covers the commissioner stipends, audits, legal counsel, bookkeeping, HR services, KGov reports, and listed and lists from the assessor and elections, as well as any specialized consulting services that may be needed by the commission. Your agenda know that an increase in the KGov expense. This is true. Uh, I did not increase the budget for this category, as we rarely have expenses reaching, reaching this level. Uh, we keep a, a pretty good buffer on this account in case there's a legal issues or things that we that come up. Um, if we have something major, I'll bring it back to you and we'll look at this again. But for now, I think this is a good place to be. Transportation and travel, I have also increased this amount. Um, having an additional staff member who's going to be going to conferences and workshops, um, as well as uh, our next uh, CalAFCO conferences in Yosemite, which should be a good draw. I'm expecting quite a few uh, commissioners to attend. So. Uh, I'm also on the Cal Afco Legislative Committee, so there's been, there's times where it's, they're wanting me to come to Sacramento for that, so uh, I've increased that a little bit. Uh, lastly, um, in addition, the commission approved keeping additional funds in reserve for accrued staff and vacation time. Uh, last year, that was about $12,500. Uh, I calculated it so far this year, and we're up to 
$653. Uh, you also change the reserve policy from a fixed $50,000 to 10% of the budget. Uh, that will increase the reserve by $3,400. So with that, my recommendation is receive comments and revise the budget as requested by the commission and bring back next month for final approval. Thank you. Do we have any commissioners with any comments? Do we have anyone from the public who would like to address the budget? Then I think we need a motion to approve the budget. Is that? Motion would be to bring back the budget uh, for for final approval. For final approval. Okay. So I'll make a motion that we bring the budget back for final approval at the next meeting. I'll second. Okay, with a motion by Commissioner McGuire, seconded by Commissioner Fowler, cast your vote. Motion approved, all ayes. Okay, we will go to notice public hearings B, 1718. Madam, excuse me, Madam Chair. I'm going to recuse myself on this item. Um, I'm not positive, but um, out of an abundance of caution, I believe I know um, of one of the owners of this LLC that's provided a campaign contribution within the last 12 months. And so I'm going to recuse myself on item, um, on, this, on this annexation item. Thank okay. You. Thank you, Commissioner Scrivener. It's Greenfield County Water District Annexation Number 42. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, it's Greenfield Day here at LAFCO uh, <laughs> with four different annexations. Uh, one has a protest hearing attached to it, and three of them uh, have 100% consent. So that's why you see them kind of in a different order here. Uh, I would have liked to have tried to consolidate my presentation uh, for all four, but it doesn't seem to work. So I'm going to have to give a presentation on all four individually. Um, so let me start with uh, uh, 1718, Greenfield County Water District, annexation number 482. Uh, this uh, proposed annexation of approximately 12.13 acres of vacant land located in the northwest corner of South H Street and Hosking Avenue, with State Route 99 to the west and Berkshire Road to the north. CEQA was handled with a notice of determination prepared and adopted by, by the district and city of Bakersfield. And this, uh, this has an indemnification agreement. There is no increase in taxation. This is zoned the north area, which is approximately 6.5 acres fronting seven standard, oops, that's not right. I have this written incorrectly. Okay. So it's, it's zone, zoned general commercial precise development combining. Uh, we'll, st we'll stick with that. Um, this is consistent with the general plan, the regional transportation and specific plan is consistent with commission policies. There is no ag land conversion. It conforms the assessor par parcels. Uh, there is no functional overlap. There is no MSR required as this is within the sphere of influence of the district. Uh, it has an adequate water supply. You have a water plan that's included in your, in your packet. It does not have 100% consent. We had 100% consent, but there's a small piece that the city of Bakersfield is giving to Caltrans as part of the off-ramp or the on-ramp on Highway 99 from Hosking Road. And Mr. Rice here has a little, shows a little piece of the map. Um, and you can see that there's little areas, and it's not the two that you think of. There's a little sliver, sliver right down at the bottom where it says Caltrans. It's about nine feet wide. And that's the reason why we have to go to protest hearing, because we asked City of Bakersfield for a letter of consent, and they said, well, we give it to Caltrans, but it still hasn't, the deed hasn't gone 
through yet. And we don't expect going to Caltrans, we're gonna get an answer out of them anytime soon. So it's actually gonna be quicker to go through the protest hearing than to wait for a consent on this. So that's why we're going ahead and doing it that way. And the district understands and what we're doing and why, and they're in support of us going through the protest hearing. Uh, the process required by the Cortese Knox Hertzberg Act has been followed, including notice to affected agencies and any notices and publications required by law. Annexation to the Greenfield County Water Dust District does not have 100% land hour consent. Uh, therefore, it is recommended that the commission consider the environmental documents adopted by the applicant and the city of Bakersfield and further recommend that the commission approve the proposal annexation subject to protest hearing, protest hearing and conditions recommended by the executive officer. Okay. Do we have anyone from the public who would like to speak to this item? Commissioners? Okay, we need a motion. So move. Second. Okay, with a motion by Commissioner Garola, seconded by Commissioner Fowler, let's cast our votes. Motion approved, all ayes. Okay, now we have public project review. 1712 Greenfield County Water District, annexation number 45. He's got it. Yeah, he knows, he can hear. Yes, Chairman. Uh, 1712, this is Greenfield annex uh, County Water District, annexation number 45. This annexation consists of two parcels that were presented to us a little differently this time. APN 516-010-28 is approximately 45.51 acres of unimproved land zone low density residential and is located at the northeast corner of South Union and Hosking Avenue. APN 517-020-11 is 12.34 acres of unimproved land. Both parcels are within the city of Bakersfield boundaries. CEQA. Uh, was handled with a notice of exemption prepared and adopted by the district on the first APN, and a negative declaration was adopted by the city of Bakersfield on the second APN. So we have two separate CEQA documents on this one. This proposal does have 100% landowner consent, and the applicant has requested that notice, and hearing, notice, hearing, and protest hearing be waived as allowed by Government Code Section 56663. The applicant has signed an indemnification agreement. There is no tax increase, it is consistent with a general plan, regional transportation plan, or specific plans. It is consistent with commission policies. There is no ag land conversion, it conforms to the assessor's parcels. There's no functional overlap. Uh, there's no municipal service review requirement as the annexation is when, within the district's sphere of influence uh, and has an adequate water supply. Uh, process required by the Cortese Knox Hertzberg Act has been followed, including notices to affected agencies and any notices and publications required by law. Annexations to the Greenfield Water District has 100% landowner consent. The district has requested the notice hearing and protest hearing be waived. So it's my recommendation that the district, that the commission consider the environmental document adopted by the applicant, waive notice, hearing and protest hearing, and approve annexation number 1712. Thank you. Do we have anyone from the public who would like to speak to the 1712 Greenfield County Water District? Ma Madam Chair, I'm gonna recuse myself on this item as well. Pardon me for interrupting. I'm, I'm looking on here, I wanna ask council a question. The owner listed as Marcus Rudnick, but in parentheses, um, I, I think it says a barbage CPA firm. And so are they a, also an owner or are they just the CPA for the LLC? I, th I think I'm, I'm going to recuse myself on this one just to be safe as well. Okay, thank you. Okay, yes. commissioners. Yes, Commissioner Fowler. I have a question. Uh, these two parcels are separate from one another and are being bundled. We don't have a policy against bundling. The city of Bakersfield once did. I know it's 100% consent, but could you comment? 
actually, I, I encourage bundling. It was a little odd that it happened with two different CEQA documents here. Um, but if they can get more, more pieces through with one application, that doesn't, doesn't bother me at all. Um, if there is something unusual about their properties, and we've done this in the past, we recommended to, to the applicant that they split those uh, into separate annexations. Um, you're gonna see one come from uh, a special district down south, a water district that we asked them to split, split an annexation into two different pieces. So we do that from time to time. Mm -hmm. If we know, if we think there's gonna be any, any public issues or policy issues that, that you have issues on, but this seemed pretty straightforward. I agree, <coughs> however, if one annexation parcel or part uh, has opposition and another does not, if there's bundling to dilute the negative, uh, I think that's inappropriate and I would hope LAFCO wouldn't have a policy in favor of that. It could work that way, it can work the other way too, where uh, opposition in one area could kill the project then they in another should be area separated. that should be separated. Yes, they it can work. It can work both ways. Case. Great, yes. thank you, Madam Chair. Yes. Could I could I comment on that? As I recall, back on my city council days, um, and maybe it's changed since then, but we adopted the city council. The city adopted a policy that if it was if you had 100% landowner consent, then the city would could bundle them. But if you did not have that, we would not do that. And that would make sense. And there were yes. there were lots of people that gave their input into that uh, uh, decision. <laughs> sure. Okay. Thank you. Another quick comment. Maybe Mr. Esselman would come forward and tell us if that's the current policy of the city. I don't know. Is that he up there? No. Nope. Oh, he's not. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm far enough away. I can't tell who that is. I'd be interested in know what knowing what the city's current policy is. Thank you. Okay, any more questions from the commissioners? Okay, we need a motion. Make I move one. approval. Second. Okay, a motion made by Commissioner Fowler, seconded by Commissioner Grola. Cast your vote. Motion approved, all ayes. Okay, we will go to public project review B which is 1715 Greenfield County Water District, Annexation Number 48. That's Mr. Knox. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, per, this proposed annexation is approximately 35.2 acres of unimproved land located on the east side of South Union Avenue, south of Barbara Edison Canal between Berkshire and Panama Lane. CEQA is covered by a notice of exemption prepared and adopted by the district. This proposal has 100% landowner consent and the applicant has requested that notice hearing and protest hearing be waived as allowed by government code section 56663. Uh, this project uh, does have an indemnific indemnification agreement. There's no increase in taxes. It's consistent with general plan, regional transportation plan or specific plan. It's consistent with commission policies. There's no ag land conversion it conforms the assessor's parcels. There's no functional overlap and no MSR required. There's also adequate water supply. Uh, the process required by Cortese Knox Hertzberg Act has been followed, including notice of affected agencies and any notices and public publications required by law. Annexation to the Greenfield County Water District does have 100% landowner consent. The district has requested that notice, hearing, and protest hearing be waived. It is my recommendation to the commission to consider the environmental document adopted by the applicant, waive notice, hearing and protest hearing, and approve annexation number 1715. Thank you, Mr. Knox. Do we have anyone from the public who would like to address item 1715, Greenfield County Water District, annexation number 48? Commissioners, any questions? Okay. We need a motion. Make a motion, we approve. Second. Second. Thank you. Commissioner McGuire made the motion. Commissioner Sanders seconded the motion. Cast your votes. Motion 
Motion approved, all ayes. Okay, we have um, public pre project review C, which is 1716 Greenfield County Water District, annexation number 51. Madam Chairman, I, I have to recuse myself. One of my clients is, is one of the applicants. Okay, thank you. Mr. Knox? Yes. Uh, uh, this is application 1716, uh, annexation number 51. Uh, it's a proposed uh, annexation of approximately 9.7 acres of unapproved land located in the northwest corner of South H Street and Hosking Road. CEQA is handled by notice of exemption, prepared and adopted by the district, and the proposal has 100% landowner consent. Um, also has um, indemnification agreement, no tax increase, is consistent with the general plan, regional transportation plan, or specific plan, consistent with commission policies. There's no ag land conversion. It conforms to the assessor's parcels. There's no functional overlap, and no uh, municipal service review required and also has adequate water supply. The process required by the Cortese Knox Hertzberg Act has been followed, including notices to affected agencies and any notices and publications required by law. Annexation to the Greenfield County Water District has 100% landowner consent. The district has requested that notice, hearing, and protest hearing be waived. It is my recommendation that the commission consider the environmental document adopted by the applicant, waive notice, hearing, and protest hearing, and approve annexation number 1716. Thank you. Is there anyone from the public that would like to speak to the 1716 Greenfield County Water District Annexation Number 51? Seeing none. Commissioners? Okay. We need a motion and a second. I'll move approval. Second. Okay, we have a motion by Commissioner Couch, seconded by Commissioner McGuire. Cast your votes. Motion approved, all ayes. Okay, next item, commission, commission items. Commissioners, any of you have any report? No? Okay, we go to general business. A, approval of claims list number 1803. Move to approve. I'll second. Who was the second? Thank you. Okay, we have motion by Commissioner Sanders, second by Commissioner Garola. Cast your vote. Motion approved, all ayes. Okay. General business B, Kern Lafco staff vacation <coughs> modifications continued. Mr. Knox. Thank you. Thank you. This is a continuation of the same item from last meeting. You asked for several options and specific language to be brought back to you at this meeting. And I bring you three options. One is to do nothing. Two, adopt the county schedule. Or three, create your own schedule. If you do nothing, staff will continue to work on the same schedule listed in the staff handbook. Nothing changes. If you adopt the county schedule, this can fluctuate as negotiations between the county employees change over the years. Additional holidays given now could be taken away in the next negotiation, or theoretically, more vacation days could be given. Um, so that's something to consider. If you create a new schedule for LAFCO staff, presumably to provide additional holidays between Christmas and New, Year, New Year's Eve, this will be the holiday schedule until the commission decides to change it to be something else. Uh, so you always have the option of coming back later and changing what the holiday schedule is. Um, your agenda provides language for the last two options as it would be implemented into the staff handbook. And my recommendation is while there is a principle of working for your keep, which I believe is necessary, um, this is an area where you can give a generous benefit to your, your staff without a whole lot of cost to the commission. This is generally uh, a week of the, of the year that not a whole lot gets done. 
And a lot of times, myself included, I take vacation time during that week. Um, also want to point out that typically we have a meeting early in December and then not until late in January. So this doesn't really take away from our time getting prepared for the January meeting because we have additional time already built in between those two meetings. So that will not affect our January meetings going forward. Uh, is my recommendation to either adopt the county schedule or write the county dates into the handbook as currently the method without reference to the county? So either B or C. I'm happy with either. Okay, thank you. Anybody from the public want to address this issue on uh, what goes in the employee's handbook? No. Commissioners? Commissioner Garola. Member of the public that raised your hand that may want to speak to. Oh, please come forward. <laughs> Give us your name and address. Sochi Cruz, uh, 4700 Cross Haven Avenue. Um, I wanted to address of adopting the Kern County uh, schedule. If you were to adopt it, would you able, be able to switch out of it and into your own schedule again? Or would you have to stay with the Kern County if you were to switch into it? The commission always has an option to bring back an agenda item to change the schedule at any time. So this isn't a one way or another, it's not permanent, but it will be part of our handbook, and they would have, have to take action to change it once they change it here. Okay. Thank you. Commissioners? I prefer option three. It's flexible. I don't want us to get tied to the county schedule of events. Who knows what the future will bring, right? Commissioner Scribner. Mr. Couch. <laughs> so I, I really think option is three, the smart way to go. We are not limited as uh, we've been told we can switch down the line if we need to, but it, that seems the most reasonable choice to me. And I move approval of option three. And I second approval of option three. So if anyone has anything to say, they better speak up. My only comment was I agree, option three. So I guess I'll uh, cast my vote. <laughs> We would, but we, there we go. Cast your vote. Oh, I'm sorry. That was Commissioner Fowler made the motion. Commissioner Sanders seconded. Mine. And Mr. Couch had to step out for a meeting, so. <laughs> Motion approved, all eyes. Thank you. Okay, general business C, executive officer miscellaneous items. First, thank you for the last, on behalf of my staff, thank you for the last item. Very much appreciate <laughs> you, you, this, the commission taking that into consideration. I pre we appreciate it. Uh, let me start with uh, a legislative update. Last meeting, I gave you a list of bills that have an impact on LAFCO's abilities and responsibilities. Cal LAFCO, which is our lobbying and trade association in Sacramento, has started to send us bills for, for support, asking us to write letters on support on, on bills that they are sponsoring. Uh, yesterday, I sent two bills to the chair and vice chair for consideration of support. In reading of our legislative policy, uh, I read it to that we're supposed to, I'm supposed to give it to those, to the chair and vice chair. Uh, once you get approval or denial, uh, I create a draft letter and have council review that. Uh, once that's approved, I will send the appropriate contacts to the legislature. And then I would bring back these letters back to the commission for receive and file on the next agenda. A lot of these bills move very fast and it doesn't really work to have them on the agenda um, a week or sometimes even three weeks before. Um, so we need a, a faster process to do that and this is my understanding of how the pol policy committee wanted this to be put together. Um, the, the two we have before us now, um, one of them is a bill to bring funding for dissolutions of inactive districts 
as I mentioned before, we too have two inactive districts that uh, we need to start taking some action on, and I would really appreciate having some funding to pay for that um, and not coming out of our, 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 our budget. And this is something that the state legislature and the Little Hoover Commission has asked for is to reduce the number of special districts, consolidate, streamline, and uh, help make the process better. I want to reemphasize re that neither of these bills, well, let me back up. The second bill is an omnibus bill, which has some non -substantive, substantive changes, meaning they're clarifying, which helps us when we read the Cortese Knox Hertzberg Act, which is what we're mostly have, having to deal with. There are sections of it that could be read different ways, are vague. And this is clarification of those. It doesn't make substantive, substantive changes to how we do our everyday business, but it does clarify how we do it. Uh, so those are the two bills that we're currently looking at. If we do get bills that are outside the scope of what our policy committee um, has taken a stand on, things like unfunded ma mandates, things like that, I will definitely bring that to the commission before I write any letter or send anything off on your behalf. Um, anything controversial, it will come to you first. So I want to make sure that, you know, um, I do that. But even so, that's kind of what the buffer is with the chairman and the vice chair looking at these first, is to make sure we get those covered. Um, so hopefully um, I'll hear back from I've heard back from my chair. I haven't heard back from my vice chair yet. Um, hopefully we'll get those off here pretty soon and uh, get some help in Sacramento for some of the, the, the little things that we need to keep LAFCO's running well. Um, I want to mention something, a little bit about the special district seat that's coming up. Um, notices have been sent to all special districts requesting nominations for the special district seat currently being held by Commissioner Sanders. Uh, actually, today I received a letter from Commissioner Sanders' special district requesting her be nominated once again. Very much appreciate that. Uh, nominations need to be submitted by Friday, which is March 30th, and currently that's the only nomination we have. So if there's anybody out there who wants to be nominated, please get in before Friday. If not, uh, there will not be an election. Uh, we'll go with the one nomination we have and, and fill the seat. Uh, the public member seat, uh, your staff has published a legal notice in the, in the local papers. That we've put on our website. We've informed others who are interested. Uh, we've informed the county, cities, and special districts. Uh, the public member deadline is April 6th, and to date we do not have a nomination and hopefully get that one of those soon. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so that's, that's where we are on that. Uh, we will be gone April 11th through 13th to a Cal Lafco staff workshop. Uh, all three staff will be attending, so we'll be closing the office. Next week, I'll be making a presentation to the Taft Planning Commission they like to know more about the annexation process. I have a little background with the city of Taft and annexations that go back to when I worked for Supervisor Watson. Uh, there was discussion about annexing South Taft and Ford City and a little area that they wanted to move all the way down to I-5 at one point. So those were some interesting conversations a decade ago, actually more than a decade ago. Um, so they are very interested in, in looking at some of those, not going back down to I-5, but some areas right around the city of, city of Taft. Um, and I'll also be taking Mr. Rice along. Uh, he was working for the city of Taft back when we were having those conversations and remembers even some pieces that I, I, I had forgotten. Uh, so yeah, he, he has some background on those. And, and in fact, they sent me a map earlier this week of the areas they wanted. He created the map. They, they sent him his own map back to him. So that, that worked out perfectly. So we'll be having an interesting conversation with them uh, next week. Uh, our next meeting is April 25th here at the Board of Supervisor Chambers. Um, thank you for, for today and uh, have a great 
Have a great month. Thank you. Okay. With that, I'll call the meeting to an end. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.